Welcome to Close Up Television. I'm your host, Jim Masters. It's a pleasure to have you with us today. This is the program where we celebrate extraordinary people who are doing amazing things to make our world a better place. And we're very honored today to welcome to the show for the very first time. Matter of fact, we did some radio shows together as well. Dr. Michio Ambrosius. She's absolutely extraordinary. Let me tell you a little bit about her phenomenal background. She's dedicated more than 20 years of her life to her calling as a healer with a focus on mental health and trauma treatment. Today, Dr. Michio is the creator of the Neurobilateral Processing, which is NBP. It's a technique, new, quick, and effective healing method that frees people from their trauma on a cellular level. According to Dr. Michio, most people do not connect their physical and mental systems to their past trauma. Left unhealed, trauma can cause physical illness like autoimmune disease, migraines, diabetic conditions, and digestive problems, even cancer and dementia. Their doctors may recommend psychotherapy, but most psychotherapy is talk therapy, which is not always effective for healing trauma. This process, NBP, combines techniques from complex disciplines, including yoga, breathing, visualization, EFT tapping, EMDR, all to integrate the right and left sides of the brain and heal the trauma. Now, we're going to be talking about all of this and more with Dr. Bershius. She's absolutely incredible. Again, she works with her clients in such a fantastic way. There's actually the website. We're going to mention it during the course of this broadcast. It's traumahealingmethod.com. It is uh, my pleasure to welcome her to our program for this very insightful conversation right here and right now on Close Up Television. Dr. Ambrosius, thank you very much for joining us here on the program. It's a real pleasure and an honor to welcome you. Well, thank you, Jim. It's my honor, too, to appear in, on your television. You know, uh, we've had an opportunity to chat again via radio and had wonderful conversations, and it's so terrific when we get a chance to really break down a conversation like this. And I love to ask the question in the beginning of our guests on close-up television and radio, what inspires them to do what they do and do so well? You're so brilliant at what you do and you're so kind and empathetic in every aspect of what you do. What inspired you, doctor, to become a healer? Okay, well, it goes way, way back when I was in grade school. There was a, a boy who was unkept and very slow. He may have had, you know, some developmental issues. Um, and we, every day, um, we took a quiz. Um, and he was scoring every day <laughs> zero points. And one day, I raised my hand and volunteered to sit right next to him. And started to prepare him and show him how to um, do take, taking the test, test taking, and how to remember um, the items that will be coming up in the test um, and possible uh, answers, all those things. And he started to score, you know, increase the score from zero to 20 points, 30 points, 40, 50, 60 points. And wow. my eyes are wide open and um, very surprised. And I, so I know then, I knew then um, uh, caring attitudes and expression of love and care. Um, you know, improve people's performance, uh, people's demeanor, and everything else. And improving, you know, our performance um, is a fantastic uh, aspect because when we carry some trauma, um, people are trapped by their limiting beliefs. So um, that was beginning story, and uh, ever since. 
I, I'm focused on caring for people and focused on um, correcting, healing people's um, difficulties. Tell us about, uh, there's always a beginning to every story, of course, doctor. Tell us about uh, your early background and, uh, you know, how you came to, to this country. Okay. Well, I was born and raised in Japan. And in Japan, uh, from the childhood, everyone said, oh, I wish you a boy. Um, too bad you're not a boy. And that is an Eastern culture where male children are valued. Male persons are valued um, more than females and given more opportunities than women to grow and uh, do wonderful work that they will um, be able to um, engage in. But women were um, not very much um, <laughs> well treated, so to speak, and uh, not given the opportunity. They are expected to get married and, you know, um, care for her husband and husband's households and siblings and parents and uh, as well as uh, own children to care for. So I re really did not want to get into that kind of future. Uh, another thing is when I was age 14, um, I saw this newspaper article that caught my eyes and that described the uh, young woman committing suicide. Um, she was from farming community and um, she was found dead with uh, crutching onto a pair of red high-heeled shoes. Mm -hmm. Those red high-heeled shoes symbolically uh, communicated to me uh, she must have wanted to become um, you know, good um, professional uh, while she was from farming community and their expectations are so different from what she aspired for. And I said to myself, I am not going to let that happen to me. I have to get out of this culture, this um, oppressive <laughs> society. So uh, since then, I, it's a long story. Would you like to hear the whole thing? Um, since then, Absolutely. I started to work uh, after school. And then one day I went to American embassy and um, they had a library. Um, took out the um, directly of a, a small local newspaper uh, editor's names and contact information. And uh, although it took me uh, one week <laughs> to write letters to them uh, saying that I'm a student in Japan and I would like to find um, a host family who can, you know, aid me and, and support me to, to go through school. And then uh, one of the, the editor put my uh, letter um, in his paper and that was a beginning and one elderly couple in Indiana volunteered uh, to become my host family and we corresponded uh, several years because it took me several years to earn enough money to uh, get a cargo boat ticket and Greyhound bus and um, you know some spending money and yen was all very much um, devalued then, three times less than uh, current oh, yeah. value. So um, pennies are, you know, <laughs> accumulating, accumulating. I yeah. should say pens are accumulating. It took se several years. And at age 20, uh, barely uh, I was 20 years old, I finally told my parents that I am going to America and seek a good opportunity for me to um, test my abilities 
and increasing my abilities and do something um, to help people. And so, yes, yes. And there's a wonderful photo of that, huh? Yes. <laughs> bon voyage. That was a very special moment in your life, wasn't it, doctor? Oh, very much so. Um, this was written by uh, father of my best friend. And um, they all came to see me off from, from their show, the shore. And um, so, yeah, that was a beginning. Although I, I was seasick for three days. Were you really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it took 10 days to um, go across the Pacific in those mm. days. Mm. What a fabulous photo that is. And then, of course, um, a marriage happened as well. A wonderful marriage. Tell us about this photo and, and the wedding and so much okay. more. Okay, well, yes, wedding took place much later, of course, from the time I arrived uh, in the United States. And I um, went to school and graduated from University of Illinois. Again, I worked day and night to uh, save enough money to pay for the tuition. And in school, in that school, I met the uh, um, a young person um, who <laughs> my husband, and so a tall, dark, and handsome man, right there, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. And he was studying judo from a, a Japanese judo teacher, and the judo teacher introduced us to meet and uh, love at first sight from both sides, and um, later on we decided to get married, and. In this picture, let me find, um, point out something interesting <laughs> that shows a tradition and thinking pattern um, of Japanese people culture. Um, I am wearing red tassel that is the top of a, a dagger and symbolically telling the bride that you must kill yourself rather than um, ending in divorce and coming home in disgrace. So it was life and death, you know, marriage was life and death. Yes. In those days. Yes. Yes. Because of that, um, we kept our marriage, <laughs> not just because of that, because of our love, of course. Um, yes. We are celebrating 50th anniversary um, later this year. So, Congratulations. Yes. And there you both are. Yes. <laughs> yes, we are growing. Um, Congratulations. And, and loving together. Um, yeah. So, yes, I have been very, very happy to be married to this man. That is wonderful. And then, of course, there is the building of the education and graduation and really then sort of uh, setting your sail for this extraordinary body of work and career and another very precious and proud moment for you, doctor. Oh, yes. Okay. This picture shows um, the graduation um, that I graduated from a doctorate program called, uh, called Pacifica um, Graduate Institute. And they emphasize... A union approach instead of um, Freudian approach that most therapists uh, are trained in. Um, although, you know, the healing methods changed uh, very much uh, from those times. And um, But I wanted to talk about at what age I decided to get into doctorate program because I want to um, tell other people that never too late to uh, start studying and, and uh, train yourself to the profession that you really want to do and love, uh, purposeful and meaningful. And I was already uh, at the age 53 when I decided to enter 
this um, graduate institute. And it took me 10 years to go through the study, internship, and uh, licensing, exam taking. Whole thing took 10 years. Mm -hmm. So um, that was whole time it was very very interesting that kept me going but um <clears throat> yeah so at age 63 um i started to have this professional um work as a clinical psychologist that's extraordinary it really really is doctor i'm also fascinated by the work itself that you're doing um what is NBP. How does it all work? Can you define it for us, doctor? <laughs> yes. Uh, NBP is short for Neurobilateral Processing, tongue, tongue twisting <laughs> name. So NBP will be better to re remember. Um, and how did you uh, develop it? Okay. Well, um, that goes back, way back to my, you know, life in Japan. And unfortunately, I had a mother who was, um, in my opinion, abusive um, and later on discovered that she had a borderline personality disorder. And they are um, very much emotionally volatile and they, they shout and scream and a uh, great deal of uh, expression of their anger that yeah. they are holding and grant of that I had to receive. And uh, so myself, uh, I experienced many occasions um, of these traumatic, painful uh, experiences. And one day I was um, driving a car and I noticed my legs and, and, and feet are numb. Mm. And um, I watched the speedometer to measure the speed of um, the driving that I am doing. And finally, when I um, arrived home, I crawled into um, the house um, because still my feet are numb. And um, I screamed my head off. I made sure that, you know, nobody will hear me screaming the, my head off. And then numbness went away. So um, I took out an old tennis racket and went out into um, a spare bedroom. And, hit the, and the, walloped the, that uh, so bed it, there. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> like this. And, and uh, I, you know, finally felt better. You worked um, it out. Yeah, yeah worked out um, on myself. And that was kind of beginning of how trauma um, stays in our body. Cellular level treatment is necessary. Yes. The beginning of paying attention to uh, developing method that deal with um, cellular level treatment. Now, I've heard of uh, EMDR. Is, mm -hmm. is that related? Is that something similar as well, doctor? Yes. Actually, I have studied uh, EMDR, and even I have a certificate, and I have um, practiced with that uh, healing method several, several uh, years. Mm, but I found that uh, something is missing, so I added um, the techniques from... Um, yoga um, practices and breath work that I learned from my own experiences. Um, you know, any uh, emotions are forms of energy and that those energy need to be expelled out from your body. Um, and breath work and hypnotic induction um, and coming up with images um images are very very healing um, instrument that we all naturally have um, in in the dreams and uh, your um, purposeful dream um, imaging 
imaging um, visualization techniques. So all these are combined into this NBP, trauma healing uh, method. There's something else too that's quite fascinating and that is visualization. Mm -hmm. Tell us about how you use uh, visualization and, and how that applies to all of this as well, doctor. Okay, people remember painful memories in the visual form yeah. and uh, or in the flashback home forms or uh, in the dreams. And sometimes, you know, comes back in the nightmares. But images are um, representations of what they are remembering. So uh, in this technique, I have the client to um, erase their painful memories and then replacing with happy um, memories that you, they have experienced with their family members or friends or whoever else. And those healing images, imaging uh, abilities uh, will heal themselves from the inside out. So we're basically, we're really trying to visualize things that are positive, right? Yes, yes. And um, positive or negative, um, visualizing is very much um, incorporated into method actors. Yes. Method actors, you know, when they need to be um, sad or angry, tears come down, um, scenes, um, then they, they remember um, an image comes to them with a sad situations that they have uh, experienced um, in their past and or if they want to be uh, joyful and happy in the movie scenes then they remember the visual images of happy and joyous moments that they experience and they act out on you know be in front of their camera. And so that is um, another thing that I have incorporated very, very, very. at the, uh, you know, um, inspiration form. Tell us about the importance of getting enough sleep. We hear so much about sleep and how not getting enough sleep can really lead to uh, some physical illnesses, diseases, and ailments as well. Getting enough sleep is paramount, isn't it, doctor? It is. It is. Um, sleeping is really, really valuable uh, activities, um, healing activities. Mm, and some people, you know, it's too bad. Some people think of, you know, taking a nap or sleeping um, required amount of time can be waste of time. No. That is not true. During the sleep, the images uh, comes in the form of uh, dreams, do the healing work. Um, and also other times, um, non-dreaming situations do all sort of healing work in your body and mind and spirit. So uh, sleeping is very, very important activities. And even in a, you know, millions of uh, evolution, if it was wasteful, would, would not have developed into um, our being, but we still, you know, are able to do, uh, dream and sleep because uh, all mammals uh, sleep. And because the sleeping time repair their, um, well, imperfections, um, so to speak, or hurt um, or mm, difficult memories. And also, of course, you know, memorize um, good things as well. Positive things. Yes, absolutely. The other thing too, um, that some of us don't do <laughs> and we forget to do it. And it's the importance of breathing. 
and, mm-hmm. and not just breathing, you know, from up here, but the real, the, from the diaphragm, from the abdomen and, and professional athletes and singers and those who use their voice as a uh, part of their tool, as their talent, they know that that real deep breathing is so important because there's just something that happens. Even when you go to the doctor and they say, take a deep breath, mm-hmm. it's a lot of times we're so running around, we're going, we're hyperventilating, we're not getting those deep breaths. Tell mm-hmm. us about the importance of the deep breathing, especially the abdominal breathing, doctor. Okay. Um, abdominal breathing, uh, again, is a very, very uh, good instrument for you to do the healing. Actually, uh, my when my client comes into my consulting room, um, for the first session, I usually teach them how to breathe effectively and uh, use of your abdomen is very important. Shall I show you? Okay, so expand your abdomen um, as you breathe in so that the lower part of the lungs are expanding as you breathe in and that contain more oxygen into um, a lower part of the lungs that send the message to the brain. Calm down. Mm, you are safe. And just relax. And um, treatment of anxiety um, can be effectively treated with this kind of uh, breathing. Of course, um, deep breathing alone is not, you know, um, heal the uh, anxiety um, situations, but um, abdomen is very, very uh, important um, body part that more of us need to utilize. You know, there's another area um, that's really important that can help with all of this. And it's called it's tapping. It's it's tapping. And I think that's really fantastic. I've even done it myself, you know, when you feel like uh, stressed or, mm-hmm. or maybe you're getting a little angry about something that just happened or somebody mm-hmm. said something a certain way. Tell us about tapping, how it works and the importance of tapping and all of this, doctor. Okay. Well, um, so... Shall I demonstrate my anger management? Yes, if if you would like to do that, yeah. That's right. All right, let me stand up again and show my abdomen. And um, people carry their anger in the abdomen, sadness in in the chest. But abdomen um, can be poked up. Yes, tapping or poking. And um, let me... (laughs) show you very quickly how to get rid of your anger. One, two, three, four. Ha! 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 So there. And a very quick and easy way to get rid of your anger feeling, angry feelings. That's fantastic. And then, so then... That takes care of that. There are other techniques to sort of manage anger as well. And and tapping is one of them, right? There are some trigger points, places where we can tap that mm-hmm. actually help reduce the stress, right? Yes. Uh, that is called EFT. Yes. Uh, emotional freedom technique. Yes. And it goes like this, tapping and the uh, side of your eyes and underneath the eyes and underneath your um, nose and the chin and then um, this or that side of uh, uh, underneath the collarbone and then go to the side of your torso (laughs) and um, um, yeah emotions can be uh, especially negative emotion can be um, freed Absolutely. You know, we're talking as well about trauma and you've been so uh, open and authentic and real about expressing even your own personal experiences with that. Um, 
What do you think, doctor, from your expertise and your perspective, what makes trauma unique? And, and as we're, you're defining and describing and detailing that for us, we'll show some amazing uh, visualizations that we have here of the actual brain itself. Tell us about uh, what makes trauma unique. Okay. Well, um, unlike other types of uh, memories, trauma memories goes down into the inner part of the brain, um, not into the cognitive brain, um, middle brain and brain stem. And often people uh, forget about the painful memories um, because they are not in the cognitive, cognitive area of the brain. And therefore, um, talking therapy, therapies are not effective ways to treat traumas. So use of tapping, use of um, breath work and imag imagining um, work all combined to heal uh, traumatic memories. And um, tapping of um, right side and left side of the uh, our body part um, is very important, very much involved because you stimulate um, left and right side of left and right side of the uh, nervous system that are connected to uh, left and right um, side of the brain. Uh, so memories that are kept in the right side of the brain need to be um, healed by yeah. left side of the brain. That mm -hmm. is the logical um, side and analytical side. So by tapping movements like this, um, the nervous systems are stimulated and integrations of different parts of the brain can occur. So we can see the various uh, sides, the left and right side here. Mm -hmm. Tell us what we're looking at here, doctor. Okay, uh, again, um, this is a you know, cross section of uh, the brain. And at, at the center, that is brain stem, um, that controls uh, uh, vi vital functions, um, such as breath, uh, uh, digestion, heartbeat, uh, blood circulation, and temperature, body temperature control, are uh, controlled by brain stem. And our outer, um, brain uh, shown with a red line that is called inner brain or mammalian um, brain and mammalian means uh, animal brain and that is where the um, trauma memories go to and amygdala is the main portion uh, of our brain that um, controls our memories, um, um, emotions, I should say, and hippocampus controls memories. So mm, the especially painful memories go into uh, that layer of our brain. And of course, the, the um, green mm, line indicates a cognitive part of the brain. So um, trauma can be healed by mm, tapping uh, motions that stimulate our left and right side of the brain and integration occur um, by the stim stimulation of both sides of, of our brain. And that is one of the reasons um, healing can occur in patients and clients. And I know you wanted to talk about um, the importance of caregivers and mm -hmm. also the the child's brain. And as we're talking about that, we'll show some wonderful visualizations we have of the child brain. This one in a supportive environment. Define for us the presence of caregivers 
giving support, comfort, soothing, reassurance, explanation, and the importance of a child being surrounded by a supportive environment, what actually happens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Well, this shows a child's brain. Um, and of course, uh, at a newborn stage, um, mostly the brain stem is there. And gradually, mammalian brain, inner brain develops and controls the uh, logic and, and um, um, emotions. And then finally, um, cognitive layer of the brain uh, will develop gradually, gradually. And completion of the development of a brain does not take place until 23, 24, 25 years old. So um, the child's brain is very, very delicate and um, also less amount of uh, cognitive layer uh, is uh, developed. So having to have a good caregiver uh, who can uh, comfort them when they have inevitably um, experience um, incidents that make them uh, angry or hurt or uh, afraid um, and guilty, uh, all sort of, um, you know, life experiences that can be painful. And having a good caregiving person give them the support uh, explanation of why these things are happening um, and how to deal with those uh, situations are very, very important um, for the children so that they can develop their uh, outer brain, um, I would say, cognitive brain that have a cognition of I'm okay, I'm capable. And those children um, grow up to be very resilient and very capable uh, people. Handling life and all of the trials and tribulations that life can bring us, right? right. Which right. is a, a beautiful thing. Now, there are times when the environment is unsafe and not supportive. And we see demonstrated in this next visualization and this graphic that um, things happen when a child early on in their life is not surrounded by the love and the care and the support, as we see here. Tell us about mm -hmm. what's happening here. Okay. As I said, um, the cognitive part of the brain is not developed very well. So blunt of um, shouting or hitting or, um, you know, unkind words, um, can really affect children's brain and um, remain uh, in there as uh, forms of painful memories or uh, scary memories. And then the if the uncaring environment continue, they will develop the cognition or self-identity of I, I must be some. There must be something wrong with me, or um, if they are not able to handle some um, painful situations, they will develop uh, belief about themselves. I'm not capable. I'm not good enough. I'm not uh, lovable. Those uh, limiting beliefs will uh, develop and can last for rest of their lives unless they are uh, treated and their cognitive um, notion can be changed mm -hmm. of um, limited yeah. beliefs. That's so very, very important. And when people just look at this chart here, they see how it all really works, you know, one of the joys of this work for you is you want to bring joy and positivity and purpose to people's lives through MVP. Tell us about that, doctor. 
Okay, so um, I have developed um, this technique by my own experiences and combined with uh, other techniques that I learned through my uh, professional uh, development. And um, so in my opinion, everyone um, experience trauma or painful uh, experiences and that can be stored in the inner part of the brain and, and, and in the body, in the cellular level. Um, so I have decided that this technique need to be, um, be known in, um, in the society where <laughs> everyone is carrying uh, these painful memories and anger and sadness. Um, so to take away the um, trauma memories is a very, very um, important function or um, healing um, activities in order to have the people to become happier and uh, um, joyous, mm -hmm. less anger carrying person um, and worrisome people. Um, so it is very, very important uh, function that um, we, we could apply to the people who are hurt um, and carrying the um, painful memories. However, a lot of people do not realize they are carrying um, painful memories and traumatic experiences because the real um, symptoms of trauma do not show up until 10, 20, 30, even 40 years later. Mm. So naturally, people do not, you know, uh, recreate the symptoms with earlier life experience of hurting or uh, anger provoking or um, fear, uh, you know, increasing events and experiences. So now, they usually go to um, medical doctors. Yes, they'll go right to their primary care physician and say, right. why am I getting stomach right. aches and headaches and mm -hmm. physical pain and things of that nature? Right. Uh, as far as the folks that you're working with, is it primarily um, folks who are dealing with trauma or are you also dealing with folks for clients who are just really looking for some inspiration in their lives? Oh, yes, of course. Yeah, my work is not only uh, trauma healing, although um, in my opinion, everyone is, you know, uh, carrying trauma memories. So that is involved, of course. But um, I, um, from my own personal experiences, um, I had to work on myself um, to become happier person, um, more joyous person, and um, more loving person. And so I, I do work with the people who are having um, limiting beliefs, carrying limiting beliefs that were, you know, um, developed from the time of uh, their trauma experiences. So um, removing of those uh, trauma experiences, memories, um, very important to have them unstuck from their lives and uh, finally um, blooming uh, stage of life need to be guided and, and uh, it's inspired. 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 So maybe you can give us an example of what those first few minutes, like a first session is like when you're working with a client for the very first time. Maybe take us through what that process is like. Okay. Well, most importantly, um, the trust need to be, you know, developed. So uh, rapport building and um, yeah, showing of uh, that I care um, and 
understand what they are experiencing. Um, so those are the very, very important beginning activities. And also, I in the first session, I usually teach how to breathe deeply, uh, abdominally, to um, heal themselves and have them feel more comfortable in their own skin, so to speak. You know, you mentioned you trust, and that really is essential. It, it's, it's creating that safe environment, that non-judgmental environment is essential because I would imagine, doctor, that oftentimes their, your clients will be open and revealing to you in ways that they aren't even with their closest loved ones and friends, right? They feel comfortable mm -hmm. and they feel non-judged and accepted by you because mm -hmm. you've created this trust between you and them, them and you. So the trust really is an essential ingredient in all of your work. Oh, yeah. Very, very important to develop um, mutual trust um, and especially people who have had very um, painful experiences in their past, such as, you know, sexual traumas, um, molestation, um, or actual, you know, sexual um, violences. And they don't bring those items right away, of course. Um, and because they have not even spoken about it to their, you know, uh, loved ones or um, parents. Um, they carry the, the burden of uh, the hurt for, for a long time. And after several months, sometimes uh, they finally, you know, I had this experience and uh, I would like to talk about it. So um, several months, of course, um, several weeks that, that um, trusting, um, healing alliance need to take place. All right. yeah. Now, when you're meeting with your clients, is it um, a set number of sessions or one session, or is it sort of customized for each client and what their needs are? Yes. Um, well, however, I do not um, give them, you know, number of times that I will see them. Um, so we will uh, just go along with a um, time period that they, won't, you know, want to um, spend with um, in a healing environment. Um, so sometimes... In the case of uh, lighter uh, trauma experiences can be treated in uh, uh, only like two or three sessions. So um, that can be, you know, um, counted as a counting of the sessions. But um, usually I do not say, you know, it takes such and such times to treat this trauma or uh, this condition, uh, no. But some trauma experiences, especially like one-time uh, experience, can be treated very, very quickly with a very few sessions. That's but great. Yeah. You know, I would imagine too, as a result of your caring and concern and expertise, that you get a lot of wonderful commentary and feedback about the successes people have achieved in their lives, the forward movement in their lives as a result of working with you. Uh, we have somebody who graciously sent a uh, testimonial video that we'd like to share. Uh, would you like to uh, give us a little information maybe about that client? I believe he's uh, involved with uh, a television news network and more. Okay, well, yes. Um, this is actually a friend of mine. Um, I heard about him. Um, um, he, he's suffering nightmares and, and uh, you know, getting up in the middle of the night, um, mm -hmm. screaming, and uh, that is uh, affecting his current work. But he used to be a 
uh, bureau chief for uh, CNN and covered all the newsy items in, in uh, all of um, Asia and Middle East. And he reported, you know, such incidents as large scale um, earthquakes, tsunamis, and flooding, and yeah. reporting, you know, um, difficult situations in the war zones. Um, one time he was captured by Taliban and interrogated by um, Taliban people for three days and nights uh, at the gunpoint. He was clever enough to talk them into releasing him, but um, those accumulation of um, um, traumatic and um, difficult um, experiences um, accumulated for 10 years. And then um, after he um, moved from uh, CNN to another uh, work in different com company, more peaceful actually. <laughs> that <laughs> happens work. sometimes, yeah. Yes, PR work. And um, 10 years later, after uh, stopped working for CNN, um, he started to have nightmares, horrific nightmares. Mm. And like I said, screaming, um, you know, waking up screaming and felt horrendous amount of anxiety. So uh, real noticeable symptoms came up 10 years later. And I heard about uh, this condition that he was experiencing from his uh, in-laws who live in um, nearby. And uh, I said, well, let me try treating him. And uh, so we connected um, with a you know online device, uh, actually it was uh, FaceTime. And because he was living in um, Philippines at that time. And it took me four, four, four weeks um, to convince him <laughs> that this um, technique works uh, because he's coming from, you know, the cultural uh, background that um, do not believe in psychotherapies and uh, treating methods like this was very foreign to him. And uh, he finally agreed um, to meet with me and receive my techniques. And um, I was able to treat his um, difficult memories and difficult uh, um, conditions that he is current uh, at that time experiencing in five sessions. That is amazing. Thanks for sharing that story. And now let's hear uh, his story. Uh, and again, we we thank him for preparing this uh, video for us uh, from the heart, really expressing uh, his pleasure with your, your work. Here it is. My name is Satinder Bindra, and I'm a former war correspondent. I served many years in the field. I covered a lot of conflict, a lot of tragedy, and a lot of natural disasters such as earthquakes and cyclones. About seven or eight months ago, because of my long years in the field, I started getting some terrible nightmares. Now these nightmares took me back to those years that I had served in the field. I saw, for instance, things in my mind that I had seen in reality some 10 or 12 years ago. These nightmares, to say the least, were disturbing, they were upsetting, and my sleep patterns were disturbed. It was at this time that I started working with Dr. Michio Ambrosius. And Dr. Ambrosius came up with a very novel way of taking me back to the time where I'd actually seen some of these things. And she then started working with me to try to erase these memories, these bad traumatic memories, and tried to sort of empower me with thinking towards the positive. We did this in a digital manner uh, via a video phone connection. The first three sessions um, really didn't have much impact. But by the fifth session, things were beginning to settle down. I was reporting that I was sleeping better. And a month after I started this treatment, 
I started sleeping a lot better. I feel great. I do a lot of yoga. I do a lot of active work outside my regular areas of work. I'm a keen sportsman. And this treatment by Dr. Ambrosius, I would classify as something that has put my life back on track. I highly recommend it, and I'm grateful for all the guidance and advice that she's given me. Thank you very much. Mm. How does it make you feel when you hear client comments like that? Oh, wonderful, wonderful. That's why I say yay! <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what you, she demonstrated earlier, what you do when you're angry. Now she just demonstrated what you do when you're happy. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Which is so important. Um, you know, you really want to, which I think is a beautiful thing too, is as much as you're working with your individual clients, you really want to build up a community of healers. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that, doctor. Okay, well, uh, it started out with experiencing, you know, COVID uh, lockdown situations and um, many, many uh, people, hordes of people were knocking on uh, therapist, uh, you know, doors um, because lockdown situation um, is very, very difficult for um, most people, of course, um, everybody in in many ways. So um, I have experienced hordes of people looking for uh, therapists who can, you know, uh, treat them and uh, their anxiety, depression, uh, emotional difficulties, um, and. I found that um, more therapists should be uh, readily available. So I decided to uh, teach um, coaches and other uh, holistic health practitioners to apply this uh, very effective, quick and effective um, healing technique um, to them and started to train them uh, so that increased number of healers uh, will be <laughs> um, serving and healing people um, around the society, um, not only in the United States, globally. And that is my wish to um, increase more number of healers. Now you're very sorry. You've expanded as well to include a lot of different diverse backgrounds. Your clients come from a lot of different diverse backgrounds as well. Tell us about that. Well, uh, because I'm, you know, um, coming from Japan, I um, receive many clients who um, originally coming from all the Asian countries, um, Chinese, Koreans, Japanese, of course, um, and Middle, Middle Easterners because culturally they very similar and um, they, they feel that I can understand their cultural background and their cultural experiences. So I receive many uh, clients from different countries uh, throughout Asia um, Middle Eastern countries, um, of course, you know, throughout uh, the U.S. and particularly um, California, because my license is in California. Other life coaches, too, are some of the clients, right? Yes, yes. That's fantastic. They, they need to um, increase their um, activity levels and limiting beliefs need to be removed so that uh, their blockages uh, can be removed and they can uh, focus on their work. Um, so some life coaches who are experiencing their own um, blockages in their life or professional functioning, um, I treat them with their um emotional difficulties also um women leaders too yes yes 
which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and you offer life coaching services as well as part of your entourage of services. Yes, yes. So, um, well, trauma usually um, creates the, the limiting uh, conditions in people. So um, they get stuck in their um, life course. Uh, as I said, you know, limiting beliefs such as I'm not love, um, lovable. Mm. People keep not on good from yeah. People, yeah, um, people who are not really loving them. Um, and marriage after marriage, they don't realize that you know their their choice of the mates are controlled by the uh, past trauma experiences mm. or um, background situations that they experienced that um, train them to think that they are not lovable. Therefore, <laughs> they choose their, their partners who are not quite loving them. Unfortunately, um, those situations occur yeah. very yeah. often. More than you think, exactly. Tell yeah. us about, you have the, the training program for NBP as well. Tell us mm -hmm. more about your training program, doctor. Okay. I have started uh, my NBP training uh, program from the uh, beginning of this year uh, because of the you know um, COVID situation, increased client numbers, and uh, I decided to train more and more people who are um, interested in becoming uh, healers and uh, uh, meaningful work. Um, so I am um, um, having well, a cycle of uh, training sessions so that I can increase more people uh, who can engage in healing work. And most people find it very, very purposeful and meaningful um, profession as well. Do you do a lot of online work? Because everybody's moved online, uh, especially during the pandemic. Online has become so big. Uh, right. Do you incorporate a lot of online work as well, doctor? Oh, yes, yes. All these trainings um, take place online. And uh, I can demonstrate online. I can um, yeah, work with the, their uh, students, uh, tra uh, trainees online and have them do the uh, healing um, work um, online. Perfect, perfect method to teach and heal and uh, communicate, connect. Um, I think that is very life-saving to have, you know, oh, yeah, these yeah. online uh, technique that are becoming available. Therefore, you know, I can work with uh, people internationally as well. What, what, what is the train, training program actually like? Uh, well, usually, 10 week sessions um, and uh, I talk about uh, <clears throat> being a coach and how um, important that work is and um, <clears throat> um, we call them uh, wholeness coaches uh, after they receive the certification um, because these coaches uh, aiming at um, making people whole person um, and <clears throat> removing of their trauma is one of the activi healing activities. Um, <clears throat> so what else can I tell, the, tell you? Well, it's just uh, really sort of encapsulating what is amazing at what you do and why you do what you do. Um, let's talk a little bit now about how you are able to treat trauma on such a large scale. Ah, okay. Well, once I have demonstrated this um, NBP technique on a stage, uh, among <clears throat> among the um, audience of um, about 100 uh, people. 
um, and I demonstrated and had the, the audience to go through the, um, the technical um, gestures and movement and visualizations and breath work. And amazingly, that worked <laughs> for most people. Um, of course, it was not, of course, you know, a heavy duty uh, trauma uh, items. Um, but so I discovered um, this technique can, can work uh, with a number of people uh, in a group uh, settings. That is really fantastic. And, you know, it leads me to, to think about some of the benefits of this work. Tell us about some of the wonderful benefits of working with you, doctor. Well, um, of course, the trauma memories can be uh, treated and uh, relieved. Um, they become more... Um, motivated, ambitious people, and re they remove the, the blockages uh, in their lives and <clears throat> go on to um, doing meaningful and purposeful work. Um, and they are usually happier and more fulfilled and um, purposeful, meaningful. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and the sessions too, even when you've done them, you know, various sessions with folks, it, this is work that for you is truly legacy building, isn't it? What, what do you think is for you uh, the legacy of this extraordinary work that you're doing, doctor? Well, uh, unfortunately, we uh, do not have any children uh, because of the um, <clears throat> trauma that I um, was experiencing and I developed eating disorder and that um, resulted in infertility problems. And as a result, um, although infertility um, treatment uh, applied uh, were not successful, and so we are ending up with, you know, no uh, children, no child couples. And so I have decided to leave m my work um, and the place to heal as my uh, legacy. Um, so that's why, well, that's one of the reasons why I started to teach this technique to um people and train them um, so that my work can be carried um, on by number of people for hopefully for a long time to come. We know about the legacy. Now I'd love to know why you love this work so much. Why is, are you so passionate about it and so committed to it? Tell us about the love of this work that you have, doctor. Well, I have been doing this type of work for um, 20 years, on a little over 20 years. And um, every time I um, successfully treat people, which is a very high number of uh, uh, percentage. Yes. Uh, I, I experience such joy and uh, um, feeling of fulfillment and satisfaction um, myself, <laughs> so, which is so great. Uh, yes. you know, it's a partially uh, selfish work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, at the same time, contribute to the, the people's um, you know getting better, getting more uh, energetic, more uh, functional. So um, I really love it. <clears throat> Well, it is really beautiful work and it's life-changing for many and it's so impactful for many as well. And I've always believed that, you know, when you're inspiring and empowering others, it sort of comes back full circle for you as well. And we applaud you and commend you, doctor, on the extraordinary work that you've been doing. And we encourage folks 
to go to the website to learn more to connect with Dr. Ambrosio. So you can go to trauma healing method dot com trauma healing method dot com that's the best place to start right doctor to make connection and learn more about your extraordinary work oh yes that contains my background stories and methods my of my treatment i'm called so-called eclectic uh eclectic the healer uh, that use different techniques not just an nvp uh to treat uh, um my clients in from from different angles so um, all these descriptions are in there in my website uh, the programs that I offer will, will be there as well um, also um, you can download the app that I have in my website to um, get some free gifts like uh, uh, meditation uh, relaxation uh, recordings guided imagery recordings um, and yeah various uh, programs to heal people um, have them feel more productive and happier fulfilled and purposeful um, so find those uh, programs oh by the way um, self-love and uh, self-esteem um, increasing classes uh, are starting uh, June the 16th on Thursdays. So I would like to mention that. That's um, great. So if, if they watch this after that date, they can still go to the website and learn more about those types of courses and classes and sessions and more, right, doctor? Yes. So I combine those um, two uh, subject matters together, self-love and self-esteem, because you need to have a foundation of self-love in order to develop self-esteem. Exactly. And they go hand in hand. People's yeah, desire to increase self-esteem so that they can be happier, more productive and effective in this world. And more confident too, because when you have that, then you're confident to take on the world's challenges too, right? Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. Well, by the way, challenge is an uh, element of happiness. Do you believe that? Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> well, yeah. That's why people, you know, play golf. <laughs> yes. Or, um, you know, they try to become uh, good athletes or... Um, Musician or musicians and uh, painters or, you know, the challenge is this definitely a element of making you happy. So, um, well, you've been making a lot of people happy and joyful. And, and uh, I know it's a blessing for you to do this work as long as you have and something that, uh, you know, I think was instilled in you early when you first made that voyage over from Japan to the United States and you've come and have inspired and empowered so many and wish you continued success and joy in your life, doctor, to continue to create and carve out that path, that beautiful life's journey that you have uh, and helping people in such a deep and important way. I, I think it's just absolutely beautiful work. So we commend you and I thank you uh, for joining me as our special guest here on Close Up Television. It was uh, an extraordinary conversation and I hope we get a chance to explore some more together as well. That would be a pleasure. I thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. It was a pleasure to speak with you. Again, folks, if you would like to learn more and connect with Dr. Michio Ambrosius, here is that website. Go to traumahealingmethod.com. She's extraordinary. Doctor, thank you once again. And thank you to all of our viewers watching this episode of Close Up Television. We hope you enjoyed it. This is your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time till next time. Join us again soon for another episode of Close Up Television. Till then, for all of us, be well, take care, and thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. Yeah.